Hey there, I'm Mike Rignetto. Welcome to The Salon. This is Mental Floss Video. And did you know that a scientist named Irene Pepperberg kept a parrot for 30 years and trained it to effectively communicate? The parrot, Alex, was able to answer questions about objects and their size, shape, color, and material. Alex even invented his own words, like apples were baneries, maybe because they tasted like bananas to him, but sort of look like cherries. That is the first of many scientific studies and findings about animals animal behavior that I'm going to tell you about today. There was a study of capuchin monkeys in which scientists gave them small silver discs and taught them to treat the discs as currency by showing them that they could upgrade their treats, like from a grape to a jello cube, using the tokens. The researchers even made prices of snacks rise and fall, and they learned that the monkeys would stock up on something when prices dropped just like humans might. Speaking of money, it turns out that gray squirrels treat nuts like many humans treat our funds. According to research from the University of California, Berkeley, squirrels stow away their food in different locations like humans who manage savings through various bank accounts. The animals bury nuts of varying qualities so that they will be able to access the, I mean, make withdrawals throughout winter. If that sounds smart to you, you may be especially impressed with black bears who can count. Sorta. At the Mobile Zoo in Alabama, researchers taught three bears by motivating them with food to select between two sets of dots on computer screens. One bear was trained to select the bigger of the two sets, and two bears learned to select the smaller one. The researchers hesitate to say that they taught the bears to count, but they did do better than expected. Speaking of bears, Ever wonder why we think pandas are so adorable? Well, neuroscientists have examined their features, large cheeks, button nose, the way that they wobble, how their spots give them a big-eyed appearance. Experts believe that these things about pandas actually remind us of babies, so they're especially appealing to our human brains. Researchers have also looked into why pandas are so lazy. A recent study involved tracking eight pandas, five captive, and three wild with GPS. The researchers also examined the pandas' poop in order to see how much energy they were expending. It turns out that despite their large bodies, the animals have a metabolism as slow as a three-toed sloth. They don't move around much because they need to conserve energy for kung fu obviously. On the other end of the spectrum, we have very motivated elephants. At the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., researchers set up a pulley system for a seven-year-old elephant named Kandula. It involved cables attached to heavy cubes, and there was bamboo with fruit hanging off the cable. Some Kandula could access, and some not. He eventually learned that he could put weight on the various cubes and pull fruit closer to him. At Brown University, Dr. Christopher Anderson spent time studying the tongues of chameleons by slowing down video footage of them and then measuring their length. He learned that the smallest chameleons have the longest tongues proportional to their body. In general, the tongue is as long as two body lengths, but in smaller chameleons, it's almost two and a half. Like myself, most kangaroos are left-handed. They generally use their left hands to feed and groom. Same. The reason this is significant to people who research animals is that it's very similar to how humans have handedness, which suggests that gaining a preference like this is something that evolves in mammals. The preference to be left-handed, and therefore, Awesome. Speaking of Australian animals, according to a study from the University of Melbourne, koalas hug trees to regulate their body temperature. In hot weather, they're usually found towards the bottom of the tree, where the tree itself is cooler, and in the winter, they're often higher up. The zebra is another animal who knows how to regulate its temperature. A study was published in a 2015 issue of the journal Royal Society Open Science, which examined 16 different African zebra populations and found that in warmer places they have more stripes. This led the researchers to believe that the stripes actually help zebras regulate temperature. Another African animal defined by a prominent feature is the giraffe. You might be wondering why they have such long necks. It turns out that the giraffe evolved from other species from millions of years ago who probably had similarly long necks. There are two theories as to why this trait is important. One is fairly obvious, better access to food that's high up, and the other belief is that the neck helps male giraffes fight. The ones with the longest necks tend to win, then females mate with those winners. Now, internet dudes, don't get any ideas. 
This is not how people work. Lion manes are probably for mating purposes as well. In one study conducted in the late 1990s, researchers made a group of life-size plush lions and had real lions interact with them. Females were most attracted to the faux lions with dark manes, and male lions tried to pick fights with the lions who had blonder or short manes. So having a long, dark mane is probably beneficial. This, on the other hand, I think is how humans work. Moving on to river otters, according to one study published in 2014, they have 22 distinct calls, all meaning different things. The researchers theorized that they had noises for communicating a change of direction and warning others of danger. Infant otters had 11 different sounds, similar to how babies babble. Another social animal is the lemur. Experts often study primates in order to better understand human behavior, and lemurs are an interesting example of this because their communities vary greatly in size. In one study, there were two humans, one facing the food and one facing away. Lemurs that live in large social groups, like the ring-tailed lemur, were more likely to grab the food that wasn't being watched. Similarly, ravens are aware of when they're being observed. Scientists kept ten ravens in rooms connected by windows. Each bird could see one other bird. Later, the windows were replaced with a covering that contained a small peephole, which could either be open or closed. The ravens eventually learned what that meant, and the researchers noted that the birds worked faster to hide their food when the peephole was open than when they knew they couldn't be seen. Speaking of birds, they fly around in a V formation, as you've probably seen, because it's more efficient. They create their own vortex with combined wing power, making it easier for the group to travel. A 2014 study put sensors on bird wings and learned that the birds know a lot about aerodynamics. The birds study studied were in a very precise formation, timed their wing beats, and would even swap leaders from time to time. Another part of bird life that fascinates researchers, how they treat the eggs of other species. For instance, cowbirds often lay eggs in robins' nests, resulting in the robins tossing those eggs out. And to learn more about that, researchers have been using fake eggs for years. But 3D printing has really enhanced this research. One study managed to replicate that phenomenon by printing eggs that look like the cowbird ones, which the robins treated the same way. So that study again, do robins hate 3D printed eggs that look like eggs they hate? Yes. Science. Okay, last bird study. Scientists have often wondered why molting puts birds in a bad mood. Every year, birds replace their feathers, which can be a one to six month long process, depending on the bird. In one 1998 study, researchers found that the wood thrush bird had trouble flying while molting, so they tended to hide out and act extra careful. Let's move on to underwater animals. One study published in a 2013 issue of the Journal of Experimental Biology found that common shore crabs are able to feel pain despite a lot of people thinking they can't because of their hard exterior. Researchers administered mild shocks to crabs who definitely reacted. Other research suggests they even remember pain. For their own sake though, I really hope they didn't try this experiment on that crab with the knife. That guy looks like he doesn't mess. The archer fish is an insect-eating fish that catches its prey by shooting water at it to make it fall into the water. Researchers at the University of Erlangen-Nuremberg studied how young archer fish gained the skills to accurately hit a target up to two meters away. They observed that one fish would often do all of the shooting while the others did nothing, but to their surprise, when the dominant fish was removed, the others had become just as proficient despite never practicing. Speaking of water, one piece of research tracked a nine-year-old gray whale named Varvara who traveled 14,000 miles in 172 days. She went all the way from Russia to Baja, California, and back in less than half a year. In a recent study, researchers had 28 horses look at photographs of humans with various facial expressions. When looking at images of angry people, the horses actually had increased heart rate. They were also more likely to peer at the picture with with their left eye, a way they typically treat negative stimuli. This also probably explains the origin of that old saying, giving someone the side horse look. Dogs are also attuned to humans. In a study published in 2015, researchers put owners and their dogs in a room with an actor. Then the owner would try to get something from a difficult container. The actor would either help or refuse to help. Then the actor would offer food to the dog. Dogs tended not to take food in situations where the person 
was unhelpful, which might mean that dogs are paying attention to how we interact with one another. And since we're talking about pets, let's discuss how big cats turned into little domesticated ones. According to analysis of cat DNA, they were bred by early humans who were able to isolate the cats that liked treats and being pet. In one study, 13 different important genes were noted between wild cats and domestic cats, like the ones associated with dopamine, hence the treats and the enjoying being pet. Finally, I return to the salon to tell you that bison vote on where to migrate. According to a study conducted by ecologist Amandine Ramos, European bison face their bodies in the direction they would like the herd to go, like towards water or towards a meadow. And other bisons follow by moving their bodies as well. Once the herd has a majority, they move the herd in the chosen direction. Bison capable of true direct democracy. Thank you for watching Mental Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these very nice people. Let me know your favorite animal in the comments. I think mine is the highly suspicious Tibetan sand fox. And of course, don't forget to be awesome.